Well, welcome back to the second segment of the Italian Radio Hour. So in the first segment, we spoke to Maestro uh, Stefano Trabucchi about the Cremonese tradition about uh, uh, building violins. And uh, for the second segment, we have a very special and talented Italian young artist who is currently living in London, who has made of violins and a cello his uh, passion and dream for five years because he has turned each one of them into masterpieces. I'm very honored to welcome with us Leonardo Frigo. Buonasera, Leonardo. Buonasera. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, so let's see how we're going to connect your story to uh, the violin. Uh, a young boy, six years old, in the town of Asiago uh receives i believe a red book from his mom or maybe sees this red book in a window i don't remember correctly can you tell us what that book was yes uh i was six and that red book was the divine comedy and is a poem written in 13th century by dante Alighieri, and that is a, is a, the most important italian poet and i remember it was a uh book full of illustrations and the Divine Comedy um, explained his journey into the hell, the purgatory and the paradise. And I remember, yeah, when I was a child, all these illustrations about the Divine Comedy and I fell in love uh, with it. That's pretty amazing. We're talking about six years old. I mean, usually we get acquainted with and study the Divine Comedy in uh, during our school, uh, um, our studies, and uh, and it's quite a challenging masterpiece, obviously, uh, to break down. Uh, but for you, that became something that you uh, were totally fascinated but that was not the only fascination as well I believe you also had some musical interests uh, that you pursued over the years yes when I was um, 13 I studied violin I always loved uh, the violin I mean as an object his shape and it's just magical it has a beautiful shape and the tradition uh, about the violin that is an Italian tradition from Cremona so I was in love as well with the tradition and with the craft of a violin maker and so I studied violin for five years and now I'm not studying violin but I still play a bit for myself but yeah I don't suggest you to listen to me I'm not a great musician <laughs> right now <laughs> I just Love to yes, play. But, but you're a man of many talents because, uh, you know, we have the musical talents that you developed for a few years. And then what is your uh, academic background? What, you, what did you study uh, when you were still residing in Italy? I studied art restoration in Venice and it, it was just amazing. I mean, to be able to touch uh, some artworks in Venice, like uh, marble sculptures or wooden wooden sculptures or work into the churches in Venice was it was amazing. And I wanted to to uh, as a student I was studying violin as well. I wanted to combine all my passions into one object. So I removed the varnish from my first violin and with mm. some techniques that I learned from. Uh, the art restoration. I removed a, a varnish and I start painting on it. So I combine music and art that I always love to paint. And in 2015, I decided to combine the literature as well. So Dante, Dante's Divine Comedy. So I started this big uh, project in 2015. And uh, so let's, uh, you know, I, I had the pleasure to see how the violins are indeed constructed and also the varnish and everything. So, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the technique. Uh, first of all, what is the instrument? What, what did you use to actually uh, paint on these, on, on these violins? Because your work, which uh, we'll share uh, pictures of, is very, very elaborate and uh, intricate. Yeah, I use... Um, so in the years, I had to find, a, I call it the right recipe. 
So I mix different type of inks, uh, usually it's, uh, black inks. And there are five different types of inks and I found the right recipe. And I use uh, a nib, uh, in Italian is pennino, an mm -hmm. old fashioned pen, uh, and everything is hand painted. Mm -hmm. So um, I painted these 33 violins and one cello inspired by Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno is uh, divided in 34 chapters. There is the first chapter that is the introduction and I painted a big cello. So the cello representing the front, the first chapter on the back, the Dante's universe. So the, all the representation of the three worlds. So the hell, purgatory and heaven. And on the side, uh, in Italian, we call it fasce laterali. On the side, I painted uh, Dante's biography. So mm -hmm. with Dante's family tree, a map of Italy, the symbol of Florence and Ravenna, and all like small illustration about Dante's life. Okay, so there was indeed the representation. This is a massive uh, um, un you know, undertaking um, endeavor that you have um, you have taken. And it must have been also, <clears throat> now that the project is concluded, quite cathartic. I mean, the approach to every single canto. Can you tell us a little bit how you went about it and also how you felt as you dove into that specific canto uh, that you wanted to represent? Yeah, uh, it was a very nice, uh, I can say, journey. Dante talked about his journey. It was a journey for myself as well. So I was in London, from, from far from my hometown. Like Dante, when he wrote The Divine Comedy, he was far from Florence, his hometown. And I started from the first canto, from, from the first chapter. And canto by canto, chapter after chapter, it was just, it's very hard to describe, but it was like a journey. And mm -hmm. I wasn't alone because I had this amazing uh, book next to me that I was reading. Sometimes some uh, violins, so some artworks were very hard to paint. I couldn't find inspiration or the right illustrations or how to represent something. So sometimes it was hard uh, and I lost my how can I say you almost felt like giving up right yeah yes I lost my inspiration and after four I have to say I spent more than five years to paint uh, the whole project so I started in 2015 and I finished it in 2020 during the lockdown here in London and for a few years I was the only person that believed in the project so it was very hard. I was the only one, all my friends will say, come on, don't paint violins, let's go out. And I was like, I don't know, but I feel like that this is what I have to do. It was like Dante calling me to do something. <laughs> so it was, it was fun, I have to say, but always up and downs, and, but it's okay, now it's done. I'm sure you had to sacrifice indeed a little bit of a social life in order to complete this uh, um, this beautiful uh, piece of work. So um, so you're kind of to break down the stages of this creative process. What was the first thing that you would do that you did before approaching a new canto, a new violin? Um, do, do you mean to, to complete? The, no, the you just said, you know, did you, uh, were you going back to that specific canto and looking uh, for specific information or something that was, as you so, were going through the words? Yeah, so the, the, the process, um, I always read the canto and uh, it took notes on my notebook. And so sometimes it was always done on paper first and after. Uh, on the violin and when it was like difficult I was just taking let's say a break and try to go to the next canto and I was keep thinking about how to finish the previous one uh, and I can think that it's like a writer or like probably Dante's as well he didn't write the old divine comedy chapter after chapter but probably he went back to change mm -hmm. something or to mm -hmm. prove 
uh, something on the canto before. So sometimes I left some white places, uh, spaces, sorry, on the violins. I was like, okay, I will come back and I will finish it. Um, Until you get yeah. the inspiration, and yeah. uh, and also you know the challenge. Then obviously the shape of the the violin itself is just challenging because it does have some um, bumps. Let's put it this way. Um, even though the uh, the wood probably is very smooth, and then you have the bridge, you have the chords. So did you have to disassemble the violins yes. and to encounter for? I mean to take into account those that would have been mm, blank spaces so to speak and did you actually paint underneath uh so that if anyone is removing it they still have a piece of your work <laughs> yeah so uh i work on uh white violins so i have to remove the bridge i have to remove the strings and the fingers board as well so it was like a completely white uh violin and i painted under the bridge under the fingers board and so it's completely painted and uh, it was hard because the shape of the violin is is a three-dimensional uh, object and on the side as well has that little uh, shape that is hard to paint with a nib and it was hard as well because it's a small object and sometimes to fit all the illustrations all the the people that Dante's mentioned in Dante's Inferno, all the landscapes or the animals, it was very hard and challenging to fit into one small violin. Um, yeah, so you talked about the landscapes and everything. And uh, so what uh, Dante was also describing is a world that belonged to the 1300s, so some of the continents that uh, we now put on our Mappamondo, on our atlas, uh, we're not even present. So um, that's pretty, uh, pretty neat. What, um, I, I, you know, obviously asking you, what was your favorite canto? I think it will be not a fair question, but uh, how was your imagination um, challenged? Uh, what are maybe are the cantos that allowed you to flourish even more where you had that great sense of satisfaction or maybe brought you back to your childhood memories when you yeah. first approached that canto? Yeah. Uh, probably, uh, but you're right, it's very hard to find uh, my favorite canto. But I have to say that I found a lot of inspiration in the Ulysses canto, is the 26th uh, canto of Dante's Inferno, probably because he, he described a journey again. So Dante is in a journey and he's describing Ulysses' journey. And in this uh, canto, we have a perfect picture of how is uh, Dante's globe, the Mappamondo of Dante. So he described the Mediterranean Sea, Sardinia, Morocco, uh, Greece, and we have like a perfect picture of what was known and unknown in the 13th century. This gave me a big inspiration to start my new project, the project after uh, this collection, that I'm working on, on a globe. So it will be a handmade globe, uh, hand printed with some etching, and it will be with the Dante's map. So for Dante, the North Pole was Jerusalem because it was the city of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he's just describing in his Divine Comedy, uh, he doesn't talk about America, he doesn't talk about Australia, New Zealand. And so there is this beautiful picture from Dante's geography. And this mm -hmm. was my biggest inspiration. So I believe it also just the idea, your first drawing of a globe is also what had created some sort of mediatic uh, social media sensation. Yeah. Can you tell us about, uh, um, I believe it was something dedicated to, to a friend. Yes. I, when I moved here in London, uh, my first week, I just, I painted a postcard. I, pa I painted a few postcards for friends, but uh, I painted one with a globe. And mm -hmm. I sent it to my friend in Venice. And there was a globe with London and Venice. And we, we were very close. And I told her, we are only a few centimeters away because on the 
on the map was just like two centimeters away. So this was one of the first, um, yeah, the postcard that I sent. And thanks to this postcard, uh, I started working in a globe maker company here in London. Uh, I was the senior globe maker and I learned how to make globes. I improved the technique. And so now I'm just going on my own to make my own projects and my own globes. And yeah, so everything started from just a postcard. Just from a postcard. And uh, during your experience in, in London, when you were indeed with this globe making uh, company, how do you carve in also the physical space? Because I'm sure, you know, as the you were completing more violence, you needed more room and maybe more material because you said that your ink recipe uh, was the result of many trials and errors. So um, tell us a little bit about your, uh, space. your workspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The workspace, uh, it was this big warehouse where there was a lot of different artists, photographer, artists, and this company, they were making globes. So it was like, like a big family. We were a big family of uh, artisans and artists. And it was, it was great. I have to say that the violins are not big, very big. So I was quite mm -hmm. lucky to work on a small uh, object that uh, I was keeping safe in this place. Um, now they are in Italy and one is here in London for an exhibition at the summer exhibition at the Royal Academy, but all the other 33 are in Italy and we are organizing these traveling exhibitions. So mm -hmm. the idea is like, <laughs> Dante, he was traveling all the time. He was moving from city to city. So the idea is that this exhibition should be a traveling exhibition so it doesn't stop and it will be in Italy and we are looking forward to move it uh, in, around Europe and maybe in America as well one day. Um, so, um, but the message is obviously you were able to combine um, all your different passions, but also as myself, as an Italian living overseas, we kind of have embraced this bigger purpose of wanting to share our Italianness, our culture with the rest of the world. And I believe that that was also your objective yeah, with this, uh, this massive goal. one. Yeah, yeah this is one of my main goals uh, because I live in London and I'm talking about Dante like every day. All my friends hate me for this because I'm just <laughs> So can Dante. you talk about something else now? <laughs> can we talk about something else? Yeah, but I have to say that one of my uh, British friend uh, named the son Dante uh, because okay. he fell in love as well with Dante Steven comedy. So it was very nice. And um, yeah, so my idea is to share the Italian culture in a, in a different way. I would like to talk with my exhibition and with my violins about who is Dante, what is the Italian culture, with a in a just in a different way. So I use social media as well, uh, my Instagram, and just to try to find like um, a way to talk with a new generation as well mm -hmm. about Dante. Dante, we celebrated uh, seven hundred. 700 years from Dante's death last year. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just impressive to think that after 700 years, we're still talking about him and he's so alive in, in mm -hmm. our culture. And uh, also, you know, obviously we are coming out a very dark period. So the approach that any of us could have to the divine comedy in the last couple of years would have been completely different from our school years where at that point was a mandatory reading. So that already mandatory makes a little bit of the pleasure yes. <laughs> out of it. But indeed our life experience provided a different interpretation um, of uh, uh, Dante's, uh, uh, Dante's work. And uh, so the, as a traveling exhibit, I would assume that um, at some, you know, at some point, um, whether the violins are privately acquired or that will stay together as indeed. Um, and uh, um, I believe you have produced maybe at least a violin from a friend of, our, of yours that is the Stradivari uh, aficionado, right? 
um, with some of the, the symbols that we talked about Stradivari quite a bit with uh, Maestro Trabucchi. Uh, for, uh, is there um, more than a sequel? Because sometimes when people in, um, you know, start a process where there could be indeed a sequel, it's kind of expected, but from an, an artist's point of view, maybe you are done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want to move on to something else. Yes, yes. Your creative. Um... Yeah, uh, lots of people ask me. So, are you painting the purgatory and the paradise? And I was like, I spent five years to paint Dante's Hell, Inferno, and I don't know yet. Maybe when I'm fifty or sixty, I'm going to paint the purgatory and the paradise. I'm not inspired right now to mm -hmm. paint them. I want to. I'm inspired to create this handmade globe mm -hmm. inspired by the 13th century. So the Mappamundi, 13th century, the Venetian technique of uh, building globes and, and create this, the Dante's map. So when I was mm -hmm. studying and reading the Divine Comedy, I was writing down on my notebook all the places that Dante mm -hmm. mentioned. He mentioned rivers, uh, cities, um, towns, regions, deserts. So I was writing down everything. And now I'm just trying to recreate this map and this mm -hmm. globe. So yeah, it, it depends on the inspiration. And mm -hmm. I know that uh, is expected that I'm painting the rest as well, but uh, for now, <laughs> It's it's almost like someone has a child and they're expected to have a second one. A second uh, out, a, due, a due time, a due time, wherever wherever comes out of your libro de lede. Yes. And uh, um, how did this process maybe affect change you as um, as an artist? Um, because I mean, uh, first of all, a lot of patients. Well, also in the restoration area, um, patient. I'm sure is. Uh, it's an art that you have, a gift that you have to have. Uh, something else that you feel that this big project has affected you now as, uh, as the uh, Leonardo of 2022? Um, I have the right word, just a second. Um, maybe I don't, uh, don't remember in English, uh, Perseveranza. Well, perseverance, yes. Okay, it was <laughs> We're there. Yeah, it's there. Um, yes, because just keep going and trying again. And I stopped so many times. I thought it's done. I can't finish it. I can't paint another violin. And I was just made me stronger to keep going and and finish this project. So now. I'm using this perseverance on everything in my life, my next project as well. I know I will make a lot of mistakes, a uh, lot of stuff will go wrong, or maybe exhibition will be cancelled, but uh, have had my main goal. So I will just keep going and trying. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just resharing uh, your uh, your beautiful work because when we talk about perseverance this is all done freehand right the the final um uh so and uh in probably a very uh, a strong sense of accomplishment because you have done it <laughs> it's before you were planning to do it now you have done it and with this beautiful uh, image and thoughts. I would like to say thank you. Uh, I hope to cross paths with you um, and uh, potentially see your beautiful uh, violini in maybe in Venice or in the US. Who knows? Yeah, but, let's hope in the US. <laughs> <laughs> Benissimo. So enjoy the rest of your summer. And again, congratulations. Um, again, you are one of the Italian excellencies that we're very proud to to showcase during the Italian Radio Hour. Okay, alla prossima allora. Thank you.